Hello to the gamers and to nobody else. To nobody else today. Sorry. Sorry. Just the gamers today. Hey, this is something that's for the gamers only, okay? Actually, we might end up playing Sporkle at some point today, at which point we will invite the non-gamers to return. But for now, it's gamers only. Canucks actually lost. Not, not me saying all the Canucks need to do to be in a playoff spot is beat the Montreal Canadiens. After such a horrible start to the season, it seems miraculous that we were two points away. And then you come home from uh, picking the baby up from daycare. So let's just turn on the TV, see what the score is. Oh, 3-0 for Montreal, huh? Guess I'll just uh, fuck off. Guess I'll, guess I'll turn on Bloomberg News or something to give me something interesting to watch. I turned it on and uh, like three minutes into the game, our goalie got into a fight. And I said, that's usually a bad sign. It has happened in the NHL before. It happens maybe like a couple times a season, but it's never good for the goalie. He was doing punchers. You're not wrong. What is it with fighting and hockey? I don't know. Honestly, like fighting in, in hockey is very weird. I don't see why fighting in hockey is somewhat acceptable, but fighting in football is, like, insane. Like, when people start throwing fists in the NFL, they're like, this is outrageous, we gotta shut this down. When people start throwing down in hockey, they're like, well, you gotta, hey, they gotta, if the refs aren't gonna protect them, they gotta police each other on the ice. Like, fights in, in baseball are funny because... The players aren't supposed to, like, touch each other at all. So whenever, like, I, I love in baseball, I, more sports should keep players far apart so that you know, you can see the, the energy bubbling. Like, when a fight goes down in the NHL, usually, especially if you're in the stadium, usually you're watching the play, and then you hear, like, a, a wave of enthusiasm through the crowd. You hear the refs whistle, then you look to the right and there's like two players going at it in baseball you see like the pitcher stares the the batter down and then he just drops his helmet and starts sprinting to the mound it's like it's some chronicles of riddick stuff man it's uh i love it yeah then the dugout's clear i do love uh i love in baseball how the umpires can throw um like coaches and managers out of the game that's very funny to me you remember during um, peak COVID, assuming we're not in peak COVID right now, it's hard to tell because they stopped uh, like reporting the numbers, but during peak COVID awareness, at least, when the umpire threw the owner of the Washington Nationals out of his own box because he wasn't wearing a, a mask, it's one of my favorite umpire moments of all time. Hey, NL, do you think 7.7% inflation is bullish? Uh, excuse me, uh, Jerome Powell, you need to have context for that. Inflation is calculated on a uh, a year-over-year -year value. So 7.7% inflation, which comes in, you know, 20 basis points under what the expectation was, amortized out over 12 months, has the... 12 month outlook for inflation looking like it might be in the three to four percent range, which is barely above the Fed's two percent ad infinitum target, which is probably bullish considering people were talking about like eight to 12 percent like three months ago. So, sure, yeah, I mean, it's bullish relative to what it used to be and, and for what expectations short term were even, you know, a quarter ago. Yeah, absolutely. But this is not financial advice, I'm just saying. <clears throat> When's the Atriot collab? I'm basically the worst person to work with uh, of all time. So we were gonna do it the week that I had, like, okay. The first time Atriot talked to me, okay? He said, do you wanna do this uh, next week? And I said, I can't do it next week because I have um, so much sponsored stuff. That was the week, week where we did a bunch of Overwatch 2 stuff, right? And then the week after that, I, on Monday, I told him I was like, sorry, I, I got sick. So I don't, that was when I sounded like pure garbage. I don't want to do like a, a stream with a new person where I'm like, hello, welcome, everybody. So I was sick for like a week and a half, two weeks. And then I was like, I think I said, how about last week? And he was like, I'm at Worlds. And I was like, that makes a lot of sense. And then this week I was like, I think I'm in. And then I re remembered that uh, Friday is Remembrance Day, which is our version of Veterans Day. So I will not be here. So basically I'm... Pretty much, I'm, I'm like an actual, listen, I think I'm a good person to work with because at least I give notice and stuff like that. A lot of streamers just, I mean, I'm moving the goalposts, but they 
just show up late or not at all. And then like three days later, they're like, oh, sorry, I ghosted you. I really do have like, a, I mean, I'm like nine to two every day, except like there's a 20% chance I'm not live that day due to either illness or a, a, it's not even a statutory holiday, but I'm taking it. But we will, I swear we will get it. It's, it's, a, it's a priority for me. It's just not a priority for me over taking a day off to spend with my family because the daycare is not open tomorrow. So we can have like a family day where we will honor the troops, of course. It's, it's also the one year anniversary of like the first time my wife and I had any alone time since the birth of our daughter in September 2020. I remember last year, Remembrance Day was on like a Tuesday or a Thursday. And we, uh, we dropped the baby off at daycare. The daycare was open that day. We got some sushi. We, uh, we watched Dune. It was the first time we'd had a few hours to ourselves in a long time. So it honestly, Dune felt like it was maybe nine and a half hours long. And I loved every minute of it. Anyway, I'm uh, Dune, your mom. What the hell? What are you talking about? I was talking about how this is the one year. And, uh, tomorrow's the one year anniversary of how we saw Dune. And remember, like, it was the first time we'd had any, uh, any alone time without the baby since the baby had been born and it felt like dune was literally like the longest movie that had ever been made how do you remember that because we haven't had that many opportunities no, since because <laughs> it's remembrance day it was it was dune it was um the when we had the, our anniversary dinner and then by like 90 minutes into the dinner i was like I, this is the longest dinner i've ever it's the re recurring theme of of post baby alone time is that I you, you don't realize it but going out is like a muscle you gotta you gotta work on and we haven't really been going out that much when, when, when we're out like by ourselves for like 90 minutes I'm like man I'm I'm getting tired what the appetizers served at 8 8 p.m. What, what are they what are they talking about before uh, they were asking when I'm gonna collab with Atrioc the guy who has the T1 world champs 2022 tattoo oh. on his on his ankle and i said we were going to do it this week and i forgot i've been delaying it for like a couple of weeks because of uh illness and uh he was at worlds and then uh, i was like let's do it this week and then i remembered that it's remembrance day tomorrow let's just do it next week monday she, she makes it sound so easy <laughs> so it's just everything's so easy isn't it that's just how it is in my brain just just schedule something and do it huh listen it makes a lot of sense when you hear someone else say it, that's for sure. In my head, I'm like, Monday is sips and mouth day. I can't have two collaborative things on the same day. It's a... Love you. Love you. This is that's true. Isn't he going to be in, like, New Zealand? Whoa, what the hell? Does she ever say it back? She says it back every time. She's just outside the door. He is going to be in New Zealand. <laughs> oh, well, that's, I mean, more power to him. I don't expect him to cancel that. Is streaming solo easier or harder? Well, like, it's 10 times easier. I know th this sounds like it's not what you're going to want to hear, but put yourself in my shoes. That's why it's, like, so hard to do collaborative streaming is that I'm just, like, I'm so in... I'm, it's so convenient to just be live when I want to be live, and then as soon as 2 p.m. rolls around, get the heck out of there. So whenever somebody's like, hey, we want to invite you to event, I'm like, let me guess, starts at 1 p.m. Pacific time, and is gonna, we think it's gonna run for two hours, but you never know with streamers, because a really big one showed up uh, an hour late, and without them, that we don't have the viewership to really run the event properly, so then all of a sudden, my ass is here at like 6 p.m. sending contrite discord messages to my spouse like sorry i'm late other people are sometimes a nightmare to work with so uh not not our crew because like we just show we you know if anything i'm like usually 10 minutes late but i have a kid so i can't be judged it's that simple how was the uh how's the peloton ride this morning i've been getting a little pissed off because they 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 don't make enough 30 minute classes Five-minute warm-up class, 45-minute power zone endurance ride, 20-minute uh, 90s rock ride. Like, shit started, I'm, I'm scrolling back in the list like three weeks. So I'm doing, I finally, I did a 30-minute a, a Bradley Rose 
uh, 90s pop ride. S Club 7, Spice Girls, NSYNC, 5. And, like, the output was good, but, like, it was, like, a mid-370s, like a 375, 30-minute ride. It's maybe, like, a 205 uh, uh, watt average. But, like, I just, can you just pick, like, a, you just put, you put some good music on the Peloton? Like, why, why isn't there a 30-minute um, Leanne Hainsby... Hatsune Miku ride, where she's like, okay, um, you know, 80 resistance, 150 to 200 cadence, get ready, it goes, sure, I'll add who asked as a channel emote. If you just get a normal bike, you can listen to your own music, it's crazy. Yeah, and then your ass will like, no offense, but it'll be like lazy. You know, you're just out there riding like your own bike on the bike path or something like that. You're not going, you're not putting out 250 watts in the damn bike lane. You know, you're going to T-bone an SUV. I do wish that that who asked was just like a little smaller. <laughs> it's uh, why is it so wide? Damn, that is it, it might be one of the most toxic emotes I've ever seen, but that's OK. Here's the thing, like, you may not have asked, but, like, at the same time, like, you're here, so, like, in some ways, implicitly, you did ask. If you didn't ask, you would just leave. Or hit, like, the, the button that skips forward, like, 15 seconds on the podcast. A clue on today's New York Times crossword is four letters, out of one's gourd, but pogged doesn't fit. What do I do? What is, out, I guess, out of one's gourd? That's, that's your, you're crazy, you're silly. It's four letters, four letters out of your gourd. Loco, yo, or nuts. Yeah, wow, wow. We got some crossword experts in here. Anyway, I'm gonna load up Fabular once upon a space time. Get destroyed. Okay, and my shield gets some hit points restored because I got an energy orb, right? I am pogging. Now you, he's got a star on him. Yo, did you see you see this grapple though? They didn't stand a chance. Who's next? Oh, he didn't get stunned that time. Perfect parry. Heavy, like I'm not locked in here with you, you're locked in here with me type energy right now. He got destroyed. I I made it. Believers win. I think it's like the combo is you stun him, then you hit him with the grappling hook, and you're like, you're going nowhere. You could just call me Roadhog, the way I'm roading their hogs. I mean, <laughs> the way I'm riding their hogs, I think, is the correct uh, conjugation. Have you seen Dan trying to understand the Monty Hall problem? Dude, that's not... I'm not going to make fun of Dan. Oh, no! I didn't... I didn't even go to the... I didn't even go to the shop. I just sent it. Uh oh. Um. You guys watching this? Um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. oh man. Oh. oh. There's a bit of a, a difficulty spike there. Okay. Okay. Right. We're starting to get it. Run it back. Run it back. I'm never gonna make fun of Dan for not getting the Monty Hall problem, man. I barely understand it, and I've been, uh, you know, I've had it explained to me many times. The thing with the Monty Hall problem is that human beings have, like, loss aversion, right? So it, it in your head, it feels like it would hurt worse to switch off of what was the winning door that you selected to change to something else. Like, you, most people... And it, it's a statistical bias, it's not valid, but most people would rather stick with what they picked and avoid the feeling of, of having squandered the chance to win. And, by the way, if you knew what the Monty Hall problem solution was, your ass would have lost the last two seasons of Survivor. Just so you know. Which sci-fi property has the best spaceships? I, I love... Uh, the aesthetic of Alien. I love, um, I love 
when spaceships are less like shiny and sleek and perfect and the doors go you know I like it more when it's like the ship has like exposed pipes and the pipes are leaking some kind of fluid and it, it looks like a sewer. I like it when the ship looks like a like a submarine from the 1940s. Like that's that's or it's got like exposed cables running along the floor and stuff like that. I'm more into that. Is it not flangy? I thought it was flangy. You know, like in the Crash Test Dummy song where the guy says, uh, the we call them digits, but technically they're known as the phalanges. You know what I, you know that song? I think it's Here I Stand Before Me. Because I have many nightmares about the dead and day. You don't, <laughs> you don't know this one? This... Yeah, they got more than one song. Listen, they have, um, they have, Mm -hmm. Once there was a ship that crashed into the enemies to do a little damage. But then they also have um, Peter Pumpkinhead, but he made too many. As Jay knows from Dumb and Dumber, there's a hooray for Peter Pumpkinhead. And they have suits. Superman never made any money. Saving the world from Solomon Grundy. And that you're absolutely, I, I didn't expect Jay to know Afternoons and Coffee Spoons. And T.S. Eliot, that's all I remember from Afternoons and Coffee Spoons. I'm a big Crash Test Dummies fan. They got some good ones, man. My mind's eye is swimming in my body. I know it's there, but I can't see where. They, I love it. We, we need to bring back bands with uh, harmonicas in the song. There was like 10 years where there was a lot. Alanis was doing it. Obviously, Bob Dylan was doing it. Blues Traveler, Crash Test Dummies. Now nobody's using harmonicas anymore. Anyway, listen, I have, <laughs> we got a little sidetracked. Don't talk to me about Morbius. I got, a, I got a tweet today. Here's how busted my brain is. I got a tweet today. It's like 8.53. I got to start working seven minutes, right? The tweet said... Alert, there's a baby Morbius in the Marvel Snap shop. First thing I did was pull out my phone. I almost clicked on Marvel Snap, and then I was like, what am I doing? I'm not going to, I don't even have a deck that uses Morbius. Why am I uh, gonna about to spend like 12 Canadian dollars to buy a, a card that looks like Morbius, but it's a baby? Like I, it just, the peer pressure caused me to, it just skipped the central processing section of my brain. I should stun you and I should stay on you. We should save our energy. Very smart. Now get ready. A, a thousand things spawn. Probably the best locomotion I've ever done on this section. And then we just hang out in the asteroids and we just, we wait. We just wait. Here they come. Here they come. You're like a nobody. Fuck. <laughs> oh, no. I gotta, I gotta try one more, man. I gotta try one more. Thoughts on the Monty Hall problem? Yeah, Dan, chat's trying to make you feel bad about the Monty Hall problem stuff. And I told him the Monty Hall problem is very, like... It's unintuitive in the first place. I understand it, but mostly I just pretend to understand it. I know the right answer, so I say the right answer, and then this is how I feel like most people handle the Monty Hall problem. Before they learn about it, they're like, that doesn't make any sense. Then they learn about it, and whenever anybody else doesn't learn about it, they're like, you're, you, you don't know the Monty Hall problem? You're stupid. You're stupid. Anyway, sorry. We, we're all about uniting rather than uh, dividing. Don't look behind you. There's a dancing baby circa 2000. Oh, no. He's right behind me, isn't he? I, I can hear the Uga Chuckas. That's pain. That's pain for me. And you know what? I deserved it. I hate this, this delayed two-piece, man. I'm going to apply some D.O.T. Yeah, you know me. 
Look at this, they're so confused. They're like, oh, why am I burning? Why am I burning? You just got the DOT, brother. It, it, it. Look, it didn't do as much as I'd have liked, but I like half as much of you. 20% more than you deserve, as Bilbo Baggins said. Look at the dot, man. Look at the dot. You can call them gal the way they got gadot. The, the, the got. The, <laughs> you can... You know what? Don't call them gal. In today's world, we don't do that anymore. Call them person, okay? And then this might be like a final boss, so or a final wave. So I'm a little scared, but I'm gonna give it a chance. We only have like 1.1 armor. Don't don't shoot at me instantly. The rudeness knows no bounds. That's not making it. You don't have the range for it. Not sweating that in the slightest. I'm moving, I am moving, I am picking up every energy orb that exists. I'm sh I'm smacking you. I'm not scared of you. I'm generating an orb. Okay, good start. Very good start. Stay frosty, stay moving. Generate your own orbs. Shoot a couple of shots right into the side of an asteroid, just keeping them honest. I mean, we do pretty well against projectile builds right now. I think because we are a projectile build ourselves. Okay, I, I lost my armor. That's what I get for, for talking smack. You're not landing that one. Okay, shield's doing great. This is where you don't want to be. Yep. <laughs> you don't want to be around the wards. Hello. Hey, everybody. Okay, we generate our own orb. I can't believe it actually made it to us. I didn't think it could happen. Oh, well, I'm, I'm back. I'm back in the, in the thick of it. Get him. I didn't think you had the range on you. If I'm being honest, I didn't think you had the range on you. Hey, you just, you just hurt your boy. Again, he's not going to be your boy much longer if you keep hurting him like that. I'm feeling okay. Look at this. I'm generating my own orbs. I'm waiting for any- Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm crashing in the walls. I thought it had to be done. Maybe it didn't have to be done. There's rail guns across the entire map now. That's a little it's a little scary for me, but you know what? I think we're doing a great job of keeping them keeping them at bay. Just keep moving. Keep moving and then we go for the kill. The kill in this case is missing almost every single shot. Okay, who's next? Don't go into the wards. The wards are scary. I'm not moving fast enough. I'm glad we put our shield up there. I gotta get close. Oop. I know, I know we got an orb waiting for us. There we go. Did I just beat the game? Am I the greatest player of all time? I knew I had a good one in me. Survived! 66,000. Playtime, 19 minutes. Foes bested, 68. Damage taken, 215. Doubtful. And, we, I mean, I'm now number one on the world leaderboard. I mean, I'm number one on the Survivor, survive, Survival Hall of Fame. What can I say? Choose outcome. Will we survive this combat? Yes. For sure, you're the greatest player of all time. I don't see Mouth up there. I don't see Dan up there. Number one? Number one in history? Oh, man. Well, that'll do it for today's segment of, of Fabular. I had a great time. Feel like I mastered the combat. Feel like I need to play the journey mode to unlock the other ships. Let me throw a little slash marker. Fabular. Sorry, I was eating an everything rice cake. Ooh! Ooh! How can it just have everything? 
You know, it's got the everything but the bagel seasoning on it or whatever it's called. You know what I'm talking about. No smoked salmon. No, 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 no smoked salmon on it. You think we'll ever get another segment of Psycho Food Reviews? Well, hold on. Granville Street Burger King. Let me just check this out. He's got a 3.5. I'm very surprised to see that, quite frankly. Let me check. Um, I, wanna, I would like to sort the reviews by lowest. Garbage place with useless staff. Placed a mobile order and had to stand there for 15 minutes, wasting my break time at work. Turns out my order was made, but my order number was never called. Had to go to the cashier and tell her I placed a mobile order. Then she brings out my order that was just sitting there getting cold. Okay, that one, listen, you, you piece. You, when you go into a fucking Burger King, you got to fight for your order. I'm sorry. To, when you, you, you walk into a Burger King in downtown Vancouver. Nobody, it, you don't walk in and then they're like, welcome to Burger King. Is there something I can help you with? You got to sidle your way over to the counter and be like, hey, I have an online order for Daryl or whatever. That's just, that's just common sense. It's cheap, but definitely not worth. I ordered a cheeseburger. It's the saddest thing I've ever tasted in my life. The one thing I love is people who apparently have never been to a fast food restaurant before eating fast food and being like, what the hell? This sucks. <laughs> it tastes the same everywhere. Like the, if you're reviewing the food at a Burger King, I'm like, what, you, tell me some psycho stuff that happened, okay? The meat was so... One quarter of the bun. It was just sad. Might as well go to McDonald's. Most sane reviewer going to uh, going to Burger King. I might as well have just gone to McDonald's, considering what I got. I ordered a soft cone, and even though it's thirty nine cents cheaper than McDonald's, I still prefer McDonald's since the cone that I was served had little black strings on it. An abomination of a food chain that made my night so much worse. Thanks for listening to my TED talk. Little little black strings. On the, on the ice cream, that's a little scary, but price is out of this world. 32 bucks for two combos. The fries were so overcooked it hurt to eat. Had to scrap them. Cashier did not know the menu. We were treated, this every time, we were treated so bad it felt racist. Vancouver patrons confuse uh, bad customer service or, or simply fast food customer service for a targeted attack on them. 2022 difficulty degree automatic. The burgers were so sloppy. The meat was sliding out of the soggy bun. The bun was so soggy, your finger went right through to the steaming meat. One star. Burger King made me pay for a bag to hold my food to go. That's not Burger King's fault. That was recently passed city legislation that they you have to pay 15 or 25 cents for a bag. Now, do I think it's a little silly? Yes, but you can't give the restaurant a bad review for that. I do find it funny when I go through the McDonald's drive through and I order like, you know, three meals and they're like, do you want a bag for 15 cents? And I'm like, yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> I don't, no, I, I don't want to just hold all of the food on my lap while I drive home. I think, I think a 15 cent bag is a, a useful purpose here. It serves a useful purpose. Anyway, now my food is cold. 100% they make more money selling bags than food. 25 cents or they drop your food on the dirty counters and floors. Well, it's not a lot of money. It's the principle that my food won't stay warm unless I pay for something that costs them less than one cent to give me with my food purchase. Soon we will have to pay for the wrappers to hold the food. That's a review from Joe Durte, who thinks that Burger King has pivoted to a bag-selling restaurant. The manager... Straight up yelled at us and another group of teenagers. She told us we had to leave because we brought in food from Jollibee, even though we were going to order food at Burger King as well. Then she started yelling and saying she was the manager and yelling in a foreign language at the staff. Very rude and odd behavior. She then left the store before us and walked down the street. Also, this place is nasty. One star. <laughs> Here they drown your burger with mayo and ketchup. It overpowered the meat. What is this? Tried several branches in the same thing. One star. Dirty restaurant, true. Extremely dirty store. Staff treated me badly due to the fact that I just ordered a hamburger. What is wrong with people, dude? People really think that the, the Burger King cashier is like, oh, you just ordered a hamburger at our five-star restaurant? Oh, uh, okay, there's the line for the people that are not buying Whoppers, and there's the line. They don't care. 
one star. I traveled halfway across the town and it closed at 8.30. Washroom dirty. You can't go in. The staff do not care. That is true. Cancels orders for the fun of it, even after waiting an hour and a half? Don't waste your time with this place. Let me guess. You didn't... It, I, this has got to be a situation where they did not hit, like, confirm order or something like that. And they're like, wait a minute. My food's not here. They go check their phone and they're like, oh, no. The worst food I've ever eaten at any Burger King I got at this place. No hate for Burger King, but this one was the worst of all. No longer flame broiled. That's true. Very true. Very unclean work environment. Come on, give me some more insane takes. Told them no onions. They, lend, they then loaded both Whopper burgers with onions, lettuce, pickles, and ketchup. It was disgusting, almost as disgusting as the woman who took my order. What the hell? That took a, a very... A, that's an ad hominem attack, Kevin. A lot of people talking about the, the manager. He has a mustache, apparently. He's, he, honestly, it's, it's world building. He's going to be the final boss for sure. I tried to use my Burger King gift card at a Burger King today and was told their machine can't accept it. Um, sure, that makes perfect sense. I will say I had to put air. I'm, I'm kind of a man's man. I'm pretty handy. I had to put air into uh, my car tires yesterday. So I drove to a gas station, navigating construction, navigating the traffic, parked at the air thing. Went to use it, and it said, this air shooter is out of order. So I said, oh, okay, well, now you go look on my phone. Where's the next closest gas station? I'm driving, uh, begging for the location through text of another uh, gas station in Vancouver. I don't want to brag, okay? I got to it. It worked. I, I tapped my credit card. It charged me $2, and the, the time ran out exactly as I finished the final tire. $2 for air? Yeah, no, it's stupid. Like, uh, the, on, to, to make the medicine go down a little sweeter, it says, hey, just so you know, some of the proceeds of the air shooter go to charity, which is an interesting way of saying that um, the rest of the money goes to the gas station. <laughs> I use a bike pump? Can you do that? If I had to inflate my tires to like 42 PSI, could I, how long would it take me to, to use a bike pump to, to get every tire pumped up to that level? Seems like it would, it would take me like hours. I've done it. It just takes a long time. It's around 10 pumps per PSI. So if you're starting at like 30 and you're going to 40, it's 100. <laughs> okay. It's 400 pumps. I think I might... I, $2 is a pretty small price to pay. <laughs> it's not the $2 that bothered me. It was trying to get to a gas station in Vancouver and then just praying nobody else was using the air. Took my kids to... I mean, this is not necessarily fair. Or unfair, I should say. Took my kids to... But it is kind of humorous and a little scary. Took my kids to Burger King and need to use bathroom. Was buzzed in and horrified. A girl and guy... Having sex, blood, and drug items all over the ground. Told the cashiers and they shrugged their shoulders. They didn't give a care and my seven-year-old son was so afraid and still is afraid. <laughs> you don't have anything to be afraid of once you get home. But like, yeah, I would be a little afraid when I opened, uh, if I opened the door to that. Wasn't happy. Just asking for extra mayo and the manager was not nice. Gave me attitude. First time I've ever experienced that at Burger King. Spare yourself the disappointment. Good advertising doesn't equal a good burger. This one's pretty funny. I ordered chicken nuggets. Only sauce inside. Are you kidding me? It's just a bag full of sauce. <laughs> it's just a, a paper bag. Hey, but they didn't charge you for the bag, at least. Okay to go to when you're hungry and on the go. Price is not bad. One star review. 25 cents for a fork? Really? Restaurant, no clean, and no Wi-Fi. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, Sporkle. That was, you know, it was fun while it lasted. Me reviewing food. Okay to eat this when you're hungry. One star. They're not that psychotic. I thought they would be more psychotic. Let's do a let's search car, and then I want to do picture quizzes. 
category uh, types i don't know what that would be what what is a car sports type let me get slideshow picture box picture click no they're all can you guys stop ruining sporkle i searched car every single one is like cartoons 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 from the 90s cartoons from the 80s okay car companies 20 ugly cars from the 90s okay i can i can try i don't know what this car is this is a Nissan Vroomer. I don't know this. This is uh, a <laughs> so Chevy Malibu. It's the one that's got the, it's got the, the, the fuck me headlights. You know what I mean? That's a Civic. Excuse me. This is ugly cars of the 90s. This is not an ugly car. This car is aesthetic goals to be driving through downtown Shibuya while you are listening to Maria Takeuchi's Plastic Love. This must be the Accord, then. GMC Jimmy? <laughs> Not their precious GMC Jimmy. They don't make cars this color anymore. This color, and then, like, the 1990s, uh, like, half gold, half sand color. You don't see these anymore, man. They, they, dis they ran out of paint to, to paint this shit to look this Viridian. Slideshow. 1990s automobiles, too. <laughs> what is this? This shit is not North American. This is an Audi <laughs> A1. I have no idea what this is. That's that's called, it's a Geo Metro. Okay, this is the Honda Civic. It's aesthetic goals. It even has the parking ticket and everything. This is a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Surprised it's not double parked. What is this piece of junk? It looks like a damn vacuum cleaner why is it so why is it so smooth and so bubbly why is it, it looks so bad that's the toyota celica okay this is a ford windstar where did they get off calling like the least aerodynamic vehicle they've ever made the windstar this is the pontiac sunfire as driven by every elementary school teacher from 1992 to 2005 excuse me Oh, it's, it's the Grand Am. I can see it on the side, but whatever. Same car. Nissan Maxima. My mom's boss drove a Nissan Maxima in like the year 2000. And I thought he was like the coolest guy on the planet. I was like, whoa, we drive a Ford? This guy must be killing it. He drives a Nissan. It's got the headlights. It's got these headlights on the back of it. They're like big circles. Oh, man. This is, a, this is a Chrysler Sebring. Isn't this what Michael Scott drives? Nope. Okay. Buick Riata. It's heavy boss energy for sure. This is the car you buy in like 1991 when you're the boss of a company that is not doing very well. That's a Toyota Celica. It's just an absolutely horrendous looking car parked in the exact appropriate spot on the damn grass next to someone's house. Like there's a wake inside, but there's not any street parking. Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. <laughs> oh, jeez. Somebody's got a high opinion of themselves. Buick Riviera. Man, doesn't this just scream being in the south of France? <laughs> Driving around in the world's ugliest vehicle next to the Ford Taurus, of course. This is an Acura. Malf, one of our mutual friends owned this car in high school. It was his pride and joy. It was an Acura something. I don't, I don't know the... All I remember is like when, you, when he's got to drive all of us to Wendy's, you open up the passenger seat and then you hit the lever and then the whole passenger seat flips up and then you cram yourself in the back and then we're doing damn donuts in the Wendy's parking lot. I'm just trying to eat my spicy chicken. I'm just trying to eat my spicy chicken, dude. Um, you're a Chrysler Sebring. It's Britney, bitch. Yeah, I can see Michael Scott in that. Ca Chevrolet Caprice. Pontiac Bonneville. Geo Prism. Buick Century. Yeah, because you got to be 100 years old to buy one. Buick Roadmaster. I miss when cars had this on them, though. Like that 1950s style, like the, the tires are completely under the fender. That looks cool. Probably a pain in the ass, but it, it looks cool at least. The ugly tires? What do you mean the ugly tires? They look cool. They look cool. 
Oldsmobile Achieva. <laughs> so. Imagine Dragons, you are not you do not have my permission to watch this stream to get song titles, okay? Of course, the Grand Marquis. Is that what Sufjan Stevens means when he says, Five spirits on the Grand Marquis? I thought he was talking about like a like a an advertising board outside of like a theater. But I didn't realize he was talking about a, a Buick LeSabre. Ah oh, yes, the Lincoln Mark VIII, developed by Tony Stark. The Saturn SL2? What, you couldn't do SL1? What, Gwyn's too hard for you? In the Infinity Q45. Okay, I mean, I don't even want to run back another one. Okay, so this is a Canadian car, and I still don't know what it is. By the way, not all of our license plates are bears silhouetted with the Canadian flag on top of them. I think that's only like the Northwest Territories. This is his post. <laughs> what, what is this thirst trap for like uh, guys I went to high school with? It's, it's a prom picture. <laughs> anyway, you're a Chevy Malibu for sure. Oh, you're a Caprice. Mm, okay, I don't know. I don't know. They all look the same. Oh, never mind. This would be a Mini Cooper. It's a Lincoln Town Car. It's a Lincoln Navigator. It's a Lincoln Continental. Oh! I don't know what this is. To me, this looks like a Dodge Intrepid. Couldn't tell you. This thing must be moving extremely fast. This is, the, this is an Oldsmobile Centura Achieva. Futura, Beliva, Aruba, Scud Speeda. It's I, I can tell from the wheels it's an Oldsmobile. Another prom picture. Actually, it looks like this car fell into like a vat of nail polish. Even the logo being red. I'm not sure if I'm into the aesthetic there. It's a Dodge something though. This is in Ontario, man. This looks like some kind of... It looks like a Porsche. Carrera. GT. 96-S. Cayenne. Cayenne. Corsica. Gould. Um, that's a Jaguar, actually. Oh, my bad. What are the Jaguars called? Aren't, aren't they all called, like, um, Jaguar... <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> that's cheating. Chevrolet Monte Carlo. This photo makes me laugh so much. No disrespect. If this is you, I apologize. 100% the person that took this photo sleeps on a bed and their blanket has like a, a deer on the blanket. You know what I mean? Like, like an airbrushed deer in like a winter forest sort of vista. You know what I'm talking about? That blanket goes hard. You're, you're free to... You're free to think that. That's fine. This is a Mercury Mystique. Oh, look at it. It's so mysterious, man. Chevrolet Lumina. You know, people were buying this shit in like 1992 and they were going like, wow, I like it. It's pretty sporty. It's smart, but it's also sporty. The Oldsmobile 98, because you got to be 98 to, to buy it. Honda Prelude. Ford Bronco. This is, I, I should have known this. This looks like OJ's driving it. Like, it. It looks like this is taken in a high-speed car chase. Plymouth Acclaim. It looks like it's about to be a, a, a insurance acclaim soon. Look, look at how rusted the damn undercarriage is. Things look as it's on his last legs, man. And the Pontiac Le Mans. Oh, come on. The Pontiac Le Mans. Look at the damn rims, man. What's going on here? This is a disaster. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I got a chance in the 2000s, but I'm not going to tough this out for too long. All right, this is a Ford Mustang. This is a Chevrolet ZZ1. <laughs> I don't know. Silver, are you a Silverado? It is. Dude, can I tell you? Listen, I know this is a Prius. Let's take a second to talk. There's been some serious, like, truck inflation. Like, that Silverado... 
That's like, um, if we saw that now, you would be like, what is that? Like a Japanese pickup truck? In the 2020s, every pickup truck is like 25 times bigger. They take up an entire lane on the highway and they, they can't see anything until it gets like 50 feet in front of their grill. Like that Silverado, it looks downright modest now. And the commercials back in the day were like, you got a small dick unless you drive this. Classic parking job by this Prius. Listen, buddy, they're very slight. It's on the line. It's look, it's not a good parking job, but this is not that egregious. This is a Pontiac Aztec. You could tell because it has the worst looking trunk of all time. This is where Walter White had to sleep when Skyler left him. This is a Ford Explorer. Excuse me, this is a Ford Escape. Like when you see what company made it, you want to escape from your contract. So many of these companies don't exist anymore. That's an Oldsmobile Aurora. You can't tell me they didn't roll this into the Alero. Kind of like CTS. I called it a CX-5. By the way, nice driving, bozo. <laughs> Idiot. I beat the average, so I'm going for it. This is a Toyota <laughs> Camry. Yep. Knew it. Know it as soon as I see it. This is a Ford Focus. Um, that's, a, that's the wagon. It's a Toyota Echo. I don't know how that existed in my brain, honestly. It's a Ford Ranger. Ford F-150, my mistake. Like, look at this. This, this truck, does. maybe it's partly the angle. This truck doesn't look like it wants to run me and my family over at every crosswalk. Like, this doesn't look like a truck that would rev its engine while I cross the street. Nowadays, every truck I see looks like angry as hell, and they got like a fucking, like a light bar below the grill, and like it's... What happened? This just looks like a, like a normal truck. It would still kill me. I'm just saying it looks like it would be driven by a normal person instead of a psychopath. This is a Dodge Charger. Dude, look at... I don't even want to leave this one. Look at this blast, blast from the past. Dodge Charger. Plymouth... Uh, or Dodge Grand Caravan. Radio Shack in the background. Take me back, man. Take me back. Oh, I'm done. Wow, I suck. The Avalanche? Blast from the past? I drive one of these. What? The, the Dodge Grand Caravan? Listen, if you're doing like the soccer mom, soccer dad stuff, like whatever. I'm just saying, you got to accept you drive like a practical vehicle instead of a, a cool one, which is fine. That's me when I take out the Bugatti Veyron. I'm just like, it's just for, you know, everyday driving. No, the Charger? Well, they, I didn't say the Charger's a blaster in the past. It's okay. Buick Century? You got to be like that old to drive one or whatever. Se Chevrolet Avalanche. Dodge Durango. Cadillac DeVille. Why are car names so stupid? Buick Rendezvous. Pontiac Grand... I probably could have gotten Grand Prix. Chevrolet HHR. This is the worst car ever made, right? It looks like a hot dog. Like, I don't even know what to say about it. It looks like... You're like, the doors look like they're a part of a subway. The color is also horrible. Doesn't it look like a, it looks like the engine of a tiny train or something like that? It looks inflatable. <laughs> also, like, what's going on up here? Like, why is, why the long face? You know what I mean? Is, do you really require like a, a space this big in the front for the engine? Or is there like a front trunk or something? Like, what is this? Like, why? It, it's all the disadvantages of a sedan, but with, like, the limited visibility of a pickup truck. Like, this, this is, like, the only compact car that they have to warn kids at school, like, don't cross the street if you see one of these coming, because they'll never see you. You gotta be, like, seven feet tall for them to know that you're crossing the street. Shit looks like it's from, like, wacky races. Like, I don't I just, it's just weird. It's just weird. I mean, I guess I'm, I'm sunk in now. This, hey, there we go. This actually looks nicer than the HHR. It is hideous. That's the damn Taurus. My dad had a 96 Ford Taurus. I know it sounds like he had a lot of automobiles. It's just we've done a lot of quizzes. He went Dodge Shadow to Ford Taurus to Honda, Honda Accord to um, one of those Mercedes SUVs, and then Dieselgate happened, and he sold it and bought a... Uh, Lexus, I don't remember what brand name it is or what, what the model is. 
But every time my parents are here and they see one, they go, that's our car. I refuse to guess these on principle. This is a Dodge Grand Caravan, chat's favorite car. But why is it not purple? Excuse me, this is not a Dodge. Is it just a, this is just a regular caravan? You couldn't even spring for the Grand? Dodge Stratus, I should have gotten that. And a Pontiac GTO. Okay, I'm just, I'm truly horrendous. Like, I'm not doing another one of those. That's, is outrageous. I can't do it. There's no, I got no shot on the 80s either. Okay, so I don't know, clearly I don't know anything about cars. Are Subarus not ubiquitous there? Well, like, sometimes I'll just be, like, you know, walking, and then I'll hear, like, and then I look, because I think it's going to be, like, a Lamborghini or something, or, a, you know, like a Ferrari, and then I, it's just, like, a Subaru, like, a, a, a deep blue Subaru with gold rims, and I'm like, who cares? You're going to make me look at your car, could you at least buy one that's like impressive to look at? It's a WRX with the blow-off valve. Drives me crazy. How about recognize the car by the sound of the engine? No, I think I could get a zero on that for sure. This looks like it's from a romantic comedy, honestly, but that is John Wick. This is uh, The Revenant. Leonardo DiCaprio finding out that tomorrow is his girlfriend's 26th birthday. Do Chib's quiz. Chib, your quiz is flags of the world, they get progressively harder. Flags of the world, progressively harder. I'm not good with the flags questions, honestly. I know the ones that everybody knows, and I, and I, I know less than, uh, I know twice as many of you, half as much as you deserve. You know what I mean? Hungary, it's got the empty space in the middle. When you're hungry, you got an empty space in the middle. Some, some island nation. Barbados. Holy cow. That was surprising. That's Bangladesh. You know how I know this? We have um, a, a map on our baby's wall, the wall of her playroom. And then um, I say, where's Pikachu from? And sometimes she says, this country. And I say, that's Bangladesh. And she goes, oh yeah, it's this country. And she points to the Japanese flag. Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> Where did that information live in my brain? Venezuela, maybe we get to 70, maybe we can get to 70, Malta, I don't know where that existed, I swear to you, I don't know where that existed in my brain, maybe you are Bhutan, okay, just a, honestly an insanely lucky guess, Uganda, Mali, Angola, hey, can we get to 75? This is an old uh, box that would hold a VHS tape. I don't know this one. That's the Seychelles. Seychelles. I don't know it. Tunisia. Libya. Algeria. Morocco. Um, Singapore. Ay! I didn't expect that. This shit looks like a, like a, it's 3D. Like, this looks like I'm walking through the back rooms. It's the same shit. It's the same flag. Honestly, just like rip to you if you live in this country. Like all we did in geography class was draw the Canadian flag. It's pretty easy to draw the Canadian flag. You just got to work on the leaf. How do you draw this? It would take you like all day. Sri Lanka? That's not India. We had India. This is like India meets Bangladesh meets, I don't know. This is the Central African Republic. What? It says, oh, Central, um, Republic do Central America. The Central American Republic? You're uh, Panama? <laughs> Are you El Salvador? Are you Honduras? Are you Dominica? Are you the <laughs> Belize? Costa Rica? I think we already got Costa. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Central Amer Republica de Central America? Are you Honduras? Uh, are you Belize? Are you Dominica? Uh, okay, well. Africa. It's an island. It's an island. This is in Africa. This might be the Congo. This is uh, an island. This is in Europe. 
I haven't, I'm done, man. I, it's not Europe. It's freaking Chad. It's cosplaying as Romania. Holy cow. I, I'm not looking at the rest. Let me, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Were there any remaining I could have gotten? Nope. 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 Not a shot. No chance. Nope. Nope. I feel like I do know this one, but it's not Kazakhstan. What are you? Palau? No, I did not know that. I would probably guess Bermuda. It's Tuvalu. No clue. Uh, Cyprus. That's Lesotho. Okay. No idea. This is the seventh time we've seen this flag. That time it's Palestine. Burundi. Triangulars. This is, this is a magic eye. It is spinning as I look at it. That's Kyrgyzstan. Guns, shovels, and books. Looks like PUBG loot before they had the update. That's Mozambique. I don't think I would have gotten a single... I don't think I would have gotten a single one of the remainder, to be honest with you. Oh, oh, I know this one. No, no, I don't. I was getting confused. I thought it was Belarus. <laughs> I feel like I should know this one. What are you? See it? No, did, no not at all. <laughs> that one was upside down. Would not have gotten... I, I'm glad we stopped when we did, honestly. I don't think I'm getting any of those. They really got to work on the flags, man. There's way too many that are similar. We got Someone's going to have to change, okay? Like Canada, America, Mexico, like continental North America, we're doing our part. The UK, they're doing their part, but the colonies, they should mix it up a little bit like we did, in my opinion. Ireland's doing fine. Even like the three colors, as long as the, the tricolored like stripes are different colors, that's fine. Like Germany and Belgium, I get it. You got to switch a little bit though, okay? Wales are girl bossing. Don't they have, they have like a griffin or a dragon or something? At least Luxembourg used like a little, like a powder blue. Nepal's got like, why are so many of them rectangles? Nepal's got the, the, the two triangles. Switzerland's at least a square. Here you go. How about this? Uh, Ten centuries of German history. Can I be honest with you? With God as my witness, I thought that Martin Luther was British because his name is Martin Luther. That's a German name? It's the most German name. Uh, excuse me, you have a, a famous footballer named Bastian Schweinsteiger. That's like the most German name of all time. It's not Martin Luther. The Battle of Hohen Friedberg. Frederick the Great and his Prussian army defeated an Austri Austrian army under Prince Charles Alexander of Lorraine during the Second Silesian War. That shit. Frederick was like the 1500s, right? But wait, they're using... They look... They're, they're dressed... The British... The Austrians are dressed like it's the American Revolution. So I'm going to say this was the 18th century. Oh! Boom! Ready or not, here come the boys from the South. Looking like King George III in Hamilton ass. Fuck you. I can do this. I'm, I'm pretty insane at history. I lost to the average, but yeah, the only German historians are doing these quizzes. King John signs the Magna Carta. That shit was in the f fucking 15 or 1300s. I'm going to say the 1300s because this shit looks like fucking Robin Hood. So give me 14th century. Wrong. Okay. Kingdom of England won the Battle of Poitiers. That's the 1300s. Look at this fucking art, dude. Look at this new grounds shit. This is the most talented artist in the world. This is the 14th century. The Hundred Years' War is the, is the 1300s. Look at their fucking arms, dude. They're, they're straining so hard to pull back the U. 14th century. Easiest pick of my life. King Richard III of House York is killed during the Battle of Bosworth Field. I got a question about uh, history. Like, the English history, the Battle of Bosworth Field... What if you're like the guy who lives on Bosworth Farm? Like, are you just watching this happen from your window or something? You leave? Well, I just mean like, you know, there must be battles in English history, whereas like you're just like chilling on your balcony, <laughs> maybe not your balcony, but like, you know, your porch. And then, uh, you know, you see like the English and the French army approach and they happen to meet at your house. I get that you could escape, but like it's your house. The planet Uranus is discovered. Bro, look at his wife. 
She's like, get to bed. No, honey, I'm discovering planets. <sighs> Are you going to come to bed tonight? King George III. It's in honor of King George III, then this is the 18th century. Thank you, Lin-Manuel Miranda. Thomas Beckett is assassinated by four knights. This shit looks like when you are beating up a, a peon in Gauntlet Legends. They got, they got a paladin. They got a barbarian. They got a cleric. I don't even know. There must, should be a rogue somewhere back there. They got the whole damn party, man. I, <laughs> let me, I don't know. It's the 16th century. 10 centuries of Scottish history. Can I apologize in advance? This shit is the 20th century. This is World War I. King of Scots Robert the Bruce leads his men to victory in the battle against King Edward II of England during the Battle of Bannockburn. By the way, rip you if you live on Bannockburn. This is Braveheart, which is the 1500s, 16th century. Wrong. The 93rd Sutherland Highlanders Regiment of Foot, forming a thin red line, successfully stop a Russian cavalry charge during the Battle of Balaclava. What if our guns were also knives? I, I think this looks like the 19th century to me. The Battle of Stirling Bridge. Wait, wait, wasn't, wait, William Wallace is Braveheart. This is the 1500s, 16th century. Uh, what the hell? Come on. Scottish engineer James Watt invents the steam engine. He doesn't even look that impressed with himself. Let's say this is the, 18, uh, the 17th, 1700s, 18th century. He's cracked. King James IV of Scotland is killed during the Battle of Flodden. Any I users in the chat? I have no clue. I'm going to go 13th. No, wait. King James the Sixth took over from Elizabeth I. King James the Fourth. Let's walk it back a little. Let's say it's 16th century. He's using the process of elimination to endear himself to the nation of Scotland. Higher score for the Scottish quiz than the British quiz? I, did, I didn't know NL was based. During the Battle of Sauchyburn, a group of rebellious, rebellious Scottish nobles under Prince James win a victory. His, James III is killed and his son succeeds him as James IV. This is a trick question. This shit is what we just said. It's, it's got to be the 16th century again. What? How long did these motherfuckers live for? You're telling me for King James III that King James VI there was two, like a, over a 100 and something year difference? Are you crazy? 10 centuries of Swedish history. Bro, we got problems. <laughs> that's, that's, um, I know this guy. It's not Carolus Linnaeus. What's his name? You know this. It's Gustav something. He is faded. That is not <laughs> Louis C.K. Gustavus Adolphus, yeah. King Gustavus II, Adolphus of Sweden, is killed during the Battle of Lutzen, ripped to a true legend. Even after losing their leader, they won a decisive victory over the Holy Roman Empire. Bro, why, honest question, why were they fighting so much? Like, just get over it. Can't you see you love each other? Like, don't you have so much, Sweden versus, wait, I, I'm losing it. Is in Germany the Holy Roman Empire? Maybe I'm not as EU4 pilled as I used to be. It kind of is, right? Like part of Germany was in the Holy Roman Empire. How is Germany fighting the Holy Roman Empire? I'm going to say this looks like it's from the 1700s, 18th century. Wrong. Engelbrecht Engelbrechtsen leads a rebellion against Eric of Pomerania, king of the Kalmar Union. It's caused by the numerous offenses of the Danish local bailiffs and heavy taxation. I say it's the 15th century, right after the Kalmar Union started. This bridge was completed. Where does it go? Am I crazy? How do you get to the part where the... Are they not done with it? It goes into a tunnel that goes underground. Okay, because it really it looks like... It kind of looks like you drive on a long bridge and then you're just sort of like nowhere. You just like, you take the bridge and then you turn around or something like that. Anyway, I mean, to me, this looks like a photo from the 21st century, but it could easily be the late 20th. I'm going to say 21st. It just looks like the, it looks like it could be from the early 2000s. Hey! Alfred Nobel invents dynamite. They were chucking that shit all over the American West in the 1800s, so it must have been invented in the 1700s, because it takes some time to, never mind. The city of Stockholm is founded. 
you know, 13th century. Okay, I'm a genius. Olaf Palm is fatally wounded by a single gunshot while walking home from a cinema with his wife, Elizabeth Palm. This would be the 20th century. Gustav Vasa liberates Stockholm, and then they made a boat after him that sunk before it could even get out of the harbor. I'm going to say this was... By the way, these people are pogged. We will never experience pog in our lifetime like this. Look at these two motherfuckers back here. I can make fun... Yeah, they're kids in the picture. They're fucking like 450 years old now. They're losing it, man. I'm going to say this happened in the 1500s, 16th century. I'm, I know everything there is to know about Sweden. Ask me anything. Uh, Malmo. I knew what you were going to ask. You were going to ask, where in Sweden is the most per capita knife crime on an annual basis? Could not tell you. <laughs> you know what this is? Staircase to the palace. Staircase to the palace. It honestly, would have been my guess, too. And then some buildings from the 1600s. I see the Taj Mahal. I see St. Paul's Cathedral in London, England. Nope, never mind. That's Notre Dame. Notre Dame. No. <laughs> that's the, that's the, that's the... Yeah, this, this is the Sagrada Familia. This, I think this is St. Peter's Basilica, because I read it in chat. That's the Shanghai Tower or something like that. That's Shanghai Tower. Whoa! See, I'm not stupid. <laughs> I just typed in Great Wall of China. What the hell is, is this? Okay, now I don't know about that. What is this? Probably Russian something. That's not the Great Wall of China? No, I've been there. It looks like it kind of connects to the Great Wall of China. It seems like it's in Russia. This shit is literally just... A house. That's a house in Vancouver. Oh, I saw that in England. This is Baker Street Sherlock's house. I don't know it. Okay, we missed Little Mermaid, Sagrada Familia, Monticello, St. Peter's Basilica, the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, and Patala Palace. I would not have known that, honestly. Obviously, that was the Little Mermaid. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Obviously, that's a little mermaid. She's uh she's little. You wanna go crazy with this one? Five by five actresses? I know that lady. And she's from the the musical. She is from Mamma Mia. Wait, are you talking about her? Yeah. Oh, that's the sound of music. That's what happened. And then right under that, that's Mary Poppins. Right under that, here's a deep cut. That's the damn Princess Diaries. Right under that, I'm gonna be honest. Oh, I don't know what that is. A robot. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know those. The other lady is like Halle Berry. We got Catwoman. We got Devil Die Another wears Day. Prada. We do have the Devil Wears Prada over there. We got um, X3, The Last Stand. Excuse me, X2, X Men. Oh my god. It's been the last. Jurassic Park. Where? Right there. That is not Jurassic Park. She's wearing the Jurassic Park hat. That's out of Africa. What the heck? What the hell? I think Halle Berry was in Robots. She was in Monsters Ball. Speed. That's speed. That is speed. You know what's above it? No, she's dancing it's the Orange heat. Justice. She is Orange Justicing. You know this one? It's Miss Congeniality. How am I supposed to know that? You know, you've seen this one. Gravity. Oh. You know this one? Football manager. The blind side. Crispin Glover in Cabinets of Curiosity. I was watching the blind. I painted the blind side. Sorry. <laughs> she had to be here, I guess. Um, so we've got Pretty Woman. I think right below that, we've got Aaron Brockovich. I've seen this. She's at Notting Hill. Yeah. This is Aaron Brokovich. That gotta be Queen Elizabeth one. That is the Iron Lady about Margaret Thatcher. No. Queen Elizabeth the first. You ever yeah. see Queen Elizabeth the first? I don't know. Don't you look like that? She's got a bigger forehead than I do. <laughs> she was from like the the sixteen hundreds. Julia Roberts. Older Julia Roberts eating gelato. 
discovering herself in Italy. I don't know this movie. I'm going to call it... Away with Italy. Away with Italy, starring Julia Roberts. Oh, that's Eat, Pray, Love. Okay. I don't know the other one. Maybe it's Steel Magnolias. Maybe that's... Yeah, okay. Any, anytime you see a movie that looks like it's from the 1980s and there's a woman in it, just guess Steel Magnolias. It's right every time. Okay, Meryl Streep, we got Kramer versus Kramer. She's very exhausted here. That's not even Meryl that Streep. That's, like Ju a, that's Julianne Moore. That gotta be like a Alien. I'll be honest, I just don't know the other two. Can you type Alien? It's not Alien, I can, can tell you. Can you type Aliens? It's so, that's Sophie's <laughs> choice. She's choosing. And this is Mamma Mia. I thought that's what you meant when you said she's the girl from the musical. Eat, Pray, Love, Despicable Me, Victor, Victoria. I watched Despicable Me. I don't remember her. You don't remember her? No. It, it looks like maybe that's Gru's mom. I think she needs to see somebody with that <laughs> chin. She's going to kill That is Gru's mom, apparently. Okay. Do do the quiz hot salads around the world. Okay. I'll Dude. take a look at it. Um, um, no quizzes found matching hot salads. Salad? No quizzes found matching hot salad. Pick a salad, soup sandwich salad, salad bar. Did you make it up? Oh, my God. Oh. I'm going to freak out the delivery guy. No, don't do it. He's taking a photo. <laughs> oh, man. Blue logos, celebrities eating salad. Can you name the celebrities that are eating a salad? What a strange quiz. There's a lot of freaks on this website, quite frankly. That shit is Keanu Reeves. <laughs> what does this photo look like? Like such a creep shot, man. He's just chilling. He's just eating his lunch. This is Woody Harrelson. What, something's just very funny about this image. Bro, this shit should not be on the internet. This dude is literally just minding his own business. It's, it's just... I don't know who this is, though. Who is this? Is this? What is this quiz, man? It's freaking me out. Shit is James Franco. Is he, is he in the hospital? What is this? What the hell is he eating, dude? What's on that sandwich? Is it a big block of cheese or something? That shit looks horrendous. Look at Charlie Sheen. Possibly taking the most ambitious bite of a salad I've ever seen. The man is wearing a, a suit, tie, and a baseball hat with a logo on it. He's taking a comical bite of salad. Like, what is this? It's definitely a weird bowl. I don't, don't get me started on this girl right here. I got a lot to say. I got a bone to pick with her for sure. James Argent? I don't even know who the hell that is. This guy is just minding his own damn business. This quiz should be taken down from the website immediately. I do not know who this man is. I am looking at a stranger eating a salad on the beach. Maybe this is the guy who made the quiz. I don't know. And this is Lisa Vanderpump. Equally have no idea who you are. Plus, you brought your damn dog into the restaurant. I'm noticing now. I'm not anti-dog. I think dogs should be allowed in like stores maybe. Maybe at cafes and stuff like that. But a sit-down restaurant like this, is a, it's just a little much. I'd be okay with, oh, she owns the restaurant? Oh, never mind. Celebrities eating salad. How about that? No, I don't, we don't need to identify. I want to see celebrities doing things. Celebrities on stairs. <laughs> this is Al Pacino. Is he okay? He doesn't look okay. He's not even holding the railing. He's got a, he's got a, a marker with no cap on it. He doesn't, just doesn't look right, man. It's Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. Uh, wondering if you're going to keep it down. I thought I told you to keep it down. I thought you were going to turn the music off. Is <laughs> James Corden falling down the stairs catastrophically, looking like he's going to suffer a grievous injury? <laughs> he's not even trying to stop himself. It lo he looks like he is moving fast, man. He is <laughs> he lost a damn shoe. He's this is the world's longest staircase. He's going down. This is um, definitely a nightmare blunt rotation for sure. 
this would, this shit would do permanent damage to my psyche. I think if I happen to be on the other end of this staircase, this is Boris Johnson and Jaden and Will Smith. This is John Cusack fucking the stairs, looking pensive. That's Russell Brand. He's on the stairs. You only get one shot at this, okay? I'm just going to say this is Chris Pratt. Oh, it would have been sick. That would have been, that would have been dynamite, man. Excuse me. Uh, could you take this with a, a better potato, please? How am I supposed to know who the hell this is? It looks like a painting from the 1300s. That is Sebastian Stan. He's on the stairs. It's Jennifer Aniston on the stairs. I'm starting to think these might be fetish quizzes. <laughs> That's Joe Biden on the stairs. It's aggressively British. Could you be Michael Palin? <laughs> I guess. Are you, are you, wait, are you Alec Guinness? I, I see a little, I see a little silhouette of a Jedi in there. I think that's Alec Guinness, man. I know you. You're Warren Beatty. What? Is this Wee Man? Is this John Mulaney? John Mulaney? I, I was thinking the same thing. I think it's just John Mulaney, man. That's Walt Disney. This dude legit has a 4% body fat right now. He's shredded. That's Walt Disney? <laughs> dude, that's Walt Disney. His ass is Walt Disney 100%. That's Gal Gadot. Sorry, that's Gal Gadot. The, the God. The God. The God. The God. The God. There we go. That's Adam Driver. What a horrendous photo, man. That's got to be Neil Patrick Harris. Really? Are you Ben Foster? <laughs> Who is that? That's Neil Patrick Harris, dude. It's Gordon. Ra it is Gordon. I can totally see Gordon Ramsay in this. Yeah, okay. That's Willem Dafoe. This, the timeline does not add up, but I'm pretty sure that's Willem Dafoe. <laughs> I'm, I'm out, man. That's Gene Hackman. That's so hard. Like, I see it now. That's so hard to see. That's tough, man. I would never in a million years have said iced tea for this. Are you kidding me? Didn't this guy write a song called Cop Killer? I don't think this is Ice T, man. I'm I think I, I think this is Andre Brower, also known as as Holt from Brooklyn Nine Nine. I thought that was like a ice cold guess. I would have I would have locked it and doubled it. I do not think this is Ice T. Steve McQueen. <laughs> we all said it was Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> I dude, he looks a lot like Gordon Ramsay. I still think this might this quiz might be wrong. Yogi Berra, okay. That's Sean Connery. I can see that. Who's that with John Voight? Celebrities. I don't want us to do celebrities at the beach, man. So it's creepy enough. Let's do celebrities playing chess. Come on, man. Like, listen. I thought we were doing. I thought we were taking this seriously. That's Ray Charles. That's Bob Dylan. Let's let's look at Bob Dylan's opening here. I gotta be honest, it looks like total dog shit. What is going on with with his pawn position here? He's come. You tell me that Bob Dylan opened with like uh, the the grob or something. What is this? You you tell me he opened uh, with fucking B five B four. Not a good chess player, but he's thinking his way through. You gotta respect that. He hasn't developed any of his pieces. What a disaster. So this one I do not know. He knows what he's doing though. Check the he, he's castled. He's got his rooks doubled up. He's playing on a tournament board with a clock. Is Ice T? <laughs> it's worth a shot. <laughs> That's Leonard Nimoy. He had the haircut just normally. They, there wasn't like a wig. They couldn't let the man just have like a normal haircut when he's not when he's not filming. Ar what, why is Arnold playing in a simul? These kids are going to beat his ass. 
I'm I'm not trying to doubt Arnold Schwarzenegger, but this is like the kind of thing you do when you're like like good at chess. Plus, I'm looking at this. This motherfucker's about to get on passanted. He's gonna he's gonna be like, ah, you can't take all you, you can't take my pawn like that. That's I don't know what that is. That's Scottish Arnold Schwarzenegger. Who said you could take my pawn? How about celebrities hugging? That's not weird. Paparazzi's pretty cool, I think. These are the friends. That's Courtney Cox Arquette. That's Drew Barrymore. They're so crazy. Cameron Diaz. That's Orlando Bloom and Charlize Theron. Pretending they recognize each other. That's Elton John and, and Bono. <laughs> but it's really just two Elton Johns. Jennifer Lawrence, Liam Hemsworth, and PETA. Whoever PETA is. That is Raven Simone and Ashton Kutcher. That's Beyonce? <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> Bro, what was Tom Cruise doing with his hair back then? This is definitely, by the way, two guys who are trying to, like, out handshake each other. This is... This started as a cordial handshake, and then it became a fist lock, and then it became... Look at Will Smith's grip on his damn shoulder, dude. He's like, he's going white knuckled and then Tom Cruise has got the Kung Fu grip here and they're just good. If, if nobody gets in the middle of this, we're going to end up collapsing into a machismo super collider. Do the Tom Cruise bit. It's the same bit every time. It's just... <laughs> I can picture Tom Cruise going, Yes! Will Smith! <laughs> and Tom Cruise is going, <laughs> and Will Smith's going, <laughs> Tom, <laughs> fancy seeing you here. Will! <laughs> and it's, anyway, you get the idea. It's Elvis Presley and Sophia Loren. I'm cracked. I'm insane. I know everything there is to know about celebrities hugging each other. If, if celebrities are embracing, I can name one of the two, without a doubt. How about celebrities and limos? And this could be our last, this is a scary one for me. This is uh, Jennifer Lopez, Elvis, Presley. What? Elvis? Elvis. Oh, he's just trying to load the next image. Okay, I'm going to guess this is Hayden Panettiere. That was scary. This is Emma Watson. Who, what kind of creep is taking these photos? Just let him get out of the car. That's Nancy Reagan and some guy. As, and who's taking these photos, man? Let them get situated when they get out of the car. <laughs> Who is this? This has got to be like a radio host or something. I have no idea who this guy is. Shouldn't be shaking people's hands from the limo. Oh, Harrison Ford, he's going off, dude. Somebody stop him. It looks like the guy behind him is like, Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford, if you throw those deadly weapons, I'm going to shoot you in the head with these fireworks. That's not Harrison Ford. What are you talking? Watch this. You ready for this? Harrison Ford. That shit, that fucker is Harrison Ford in the damn flesh. It's Hugh Jackman. This is not fair. He's literally driving Professor Xavier around in a limo in the movie Logan. This is not like a candid shot. This is from a movie. Um, this shit is creepy as hell. That is Jennifer Lawrence, though. <laughs> this is like... Okay, uh, I don't know. I'm going to say this one is... Um, I'm going to say this is K. Jansen. Just taking a stab at it. Tony Soprano, after they gave him the gabagool... They gave me the gabagool. Bad. It does look like he's saying, oh, what's up? All right, Kate, are you, ready? are you ready to stream? That's the Beatles. I would like to think that I would have been able to get that one. What are you going to play, Kate? What are you going to play? Harrison Ford squaring up. Listen, you don't, have to, it's not like, you don't have to be embarrassed about it, but just show yourself in chat. Who in chat said, this is not Harrison Ford? I got to ask who you thought this was. Look at it. It's Han Solo, dude. <laughs> it's iced tea. 
POV, you just told Buzz Aldrin he didn't land on the moon? POV, you are corn pop, circa 1921. He's playing the room three. Well, we, I can get down with that. Let me slash marker Sporkle, and then I will send you over to my wife's stream. Uh, it, enjoy the rest of your evening. I will not be back tomorrow. Tomorrow is uh, it's uh, Remembrance Day in Canada, so I'll see you on Monday. Enjoy your, your weekend, and I'll see you then. Later. I'm malicious, mean, and scary. My sneer could curdle dairy. And violence-wise, my hands are not the cleanest. But despite my evil look and my temper and my hook, I've always yearned to be a concert pianist. Can't you see me on the stage performing Mozart, twinkling the ivories till they gleam? Though I do like breaking femurs, you can kill me with the dreamers. Cause way down deep inside, I've got a dream. I've got a dream. He's got a dream.